awesome. So hello everyone. Today we are going to be doing a session and this session will be Le Learn Tech Global. Basically this event will be running for the next five or so days. So we're going to be going to, you know, have awesome speakers and our first speaker actually will be Dawood. So I'm actually going to introduce Omkar and Ajinkya who will be, you know, leading most of this session for all of you. So I hope you all enjoy do tune in and tell all your friends because we've got everyone as you can see on the screen who will be talking throughout this week my name is Salman MKC and I'm also joined here with Dawood, Sinda and of course Omkar and Ajinkya so hello everyone hello 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 would you like to and hey uh, hi. yes um, hey. hi guys we're taking the Hi, David. Yes, I'm excited, Salman. So great to be here. Do we have Omkar and Ajinkya also here? Yeah, hello, everyone. Hi, would you like hey, to talk hey, a bit uh, about the uh, Learn Tech okay. Global event? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for hello. joining everyone, guys. Yes, I'm excited, Salman. So great yeah. to be here. Do we have Omkar and Ajinkya? I think someone's watching the stream, but yeah, sure. Thank you so much for joining everyone, guys. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, Omkar. Omkar. Omkar, I think. Oh, wait, just gonna mute Omkar for a second. Um, so yeah, I, I guess I'll, I'll let Dawood uh, introduce himself. Uh, I mean, he doesn't need an introduction. Uh, but yeah, he's the legend here. <laughs> um, yeah, so um, thank you very much, Salman. Um, Ajinkya, I think um, we wanted you to do a quick intro into the whole thing, but it looks like your, your what's your YouTube that. is Omar echoing. That. So, yes, but your YouTube was echoing. Okay, so. Yeah, so mute yourself on YouTube so that you'll be able to talk, else the audience will be confused what you are saying. Sure. Okay, go ahead. What's that yeah, song? so What's that I welcome each and every one of you. Thank you for joining our event. So uh, this is a five-day event where we are, uh, where we have speakers from all over the globe, and they are all uh, gold student partners. We have uh, we have with us Dauda today, who's going to uh, speak on the uh, web applications and how to deploy it on Azure. So thank you so much, Dauda, for joining us on the event. We uh, we are real, we really have the pleasure to have working with you. Amazing! Uh, thank you so much um, for for you know bringing me in and then uh, getting me to inspire the folks out there. I'm truly excited for for this, and I I'm very optimistic that they are going to take a lot of things away from this session. Um, so, um, if you're in the chat, just say hi, tell us where you're joining from so that um, we can have a, a smooth conversation. Okay, so put it in the chat where you're joining from. Um, I'm, I'm really feeling very comfortable because I have Salman, I have Umka uh, and Ajinkya and then also Sunda here. Tell us where you're joining from. I'm from Ghana. All right. Okay. So I yeah. see that I'm sharing my video, but the Inspire uh, logo is <laughs> covering me, but no problem at all. So um, let me ask you in the chat, what is a web app? Okay. And how um, do you build one? Okay. Just put it in the chat. Um, once you introduce yourself, just say anything. What is a web app and how do you build one? Okay. Um, who is doing that? Thank you so much, Nishan, Vishal, Shruti, Antika. Okay, Justin. Okay, I see a lot of folks from India joining. That's so amazing. Can I just say, um, so, if you're in the chat, don't forget to subscribe and hit that like button. Show support for Dawid and Omkar and Jenkia. And myself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So uh, make sure you hit on the subscribe button and also make sure you hit on the like button. All right. 
So, um, South Africa, that's so amazing. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm just going to begin right now, um, share everything with you. Okay, so um, possibly I am going to talk about how to build a web app, okay? But when we talk about web app, then we are talking about application software, right? Which runs within the browser, okay? And it is unlike the native softwares that you have, which runs within your desktop, right? This is not you know, one of it. This one, it just runs in the browser. So um, a way to run, to have your web app displayed is that you open a browser and then maybe you visit a URL or a link to, you know, um, see what is going on, okay? Don't worry at all if you're an advanced developer. I promise you I'm going to say some things which would hit you as well. Whenever I'm starting a presentation, I just want to make sure that even the lowest person gets to get, take something away from it, all right? But I won't waste your time, even if you are intermediate or advanced. All right, so um, if you are building a web app, there are like some things that you will need, okay? Um, it includes, you know, a programming language. And mostly this programming language is known as, you know, HTML, okay? But we also have SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics, um, which also allows you to build a web app, okay? But with SVG, it gives you more of a, gra a graphical, you know, approach as compared to HTML. So HTML is widely used within the industry, okay? So if you use HTML, you'll be able to, you know, do a lot of fun stuff. For example, you want to insert a table, you want to insert a picture and all those stuff, they are really possible. You can do them within, you know, your web application or your web browser, all right? So that is so much exciting. Um, another thing you should also know is about um, the tools that you need in order to be able to build, you know, your web app, okay? So some of the tools that you need include, you know, um, where exactly would you be hosting your website when you build it, right? Um, would you need an, a, a URL, like a domain, to be able to, so that people will be able to find you? For example, you type in your browser, dawoodidris.com or mspinspire.com in your browser. It leads you to some specific place, right? Dawoodidris.com in particular leads you to your website. They get the idea. So where is this website kept? Where is it hosted? That's the whole thing. We need to explain where exactly, how you can get there, all right? So if you are new to web app, don't worry. What I'm saying is very basic and you'll be able to pick up from there. So you need something like HTML, you need CSS, and you might need Bootstrap, you might need Boma.io. All those stuff are tools to build your web app. But today we are not going to be dealing, we are not going to be dealing in HTML, CSS, and those stuff, all right? But I just want to keep you on a head start if this is your first time joining a web app session, okay? So, um... Yep, you will need Microsoft Azure. So Microsoft Azure is a cloud computing um, platform, all right, that allows you to be able to host your website or your web app. But it even does more than just what you see, okay? And so as it has this thing called web app as a service, okay? So as um, so, um, if you want to use Microsoft Azure, you go to portal.azure.com. I'm sure Salman and then all the folks here are going to post it in put the link in the chat for you so you easily click on it to see what um, it takes. So Azure, portal.azure.com will land you on Microsoft Azure. You need to just sign up, create your account, and then, um, I mean, log in, and, and you'll be good to go. So um, what is really cool is that you get about $200, you know, free if you, you sign up with your credit card. You won't be charged from your credit card, but for free, I think it's about two months or so. Um, yeah, so you get it for like a, a, a period of time, all right? So um, once you have your web app, you know, you, you, you've created your Azure account, you'll be able to log in and do some fun stuff. There are a lot of things that you can do, but today we are focusing on, you know, web app, okay? So why do you have to use the Azure portal? So there are a lot of ways that when you want to host your website on, don't worry, I'm not just going to be speaking about it. I'm going to walk you through how you can really do it, all right? So... Let's, let's come to the point, how exactly would you be able to, you know, um, host your website? So you can host your website by using different methodologies, right? But if you are new to Azure, it is mostly preferred that you use the Azure portal, all right? And the Azure portal allows you to discover all available features, right? Once you know the features available when you are hosting your web app, you can do this in a console, in a PowerShell or I mean, you can, you can have multiple ways that, you know, you'll be able to host your website, okay, or your web app. Okay, and um, I'm just going to go to next. Uh, so, what is Azure 
uh, app service. Okay, so when we talk about Azure App Service, we are talking about a fully managed web application platform, right? So this this is a, a platform as service, all right? So what happens is that you, Microsoft takes care of all the infrastructure work for you, takes care of you know um, the operating system and everything that needs to power your web app to be able to run. Okay, so whilst it's power it's powering it up. It also allows you to scale up or scale down. For example, let's say you've created a web app for um, the biggest industry in your country or the government in your country. Um, you expected that 50 people to be visiting the website, but um, something happened and then it skyrockets, and then everyone tends to you know, use the web app. It means that you need to increase you know, the storage, right? Because you didn't account, you didn't plan to um, host you know, such you know, maximum users like 50,000 users. You only plan for 50, right? Now, what is really cool about using Microsoft Azure is that you get, you know, the, f the flexibility. Azure has, like, you know, algorithms built with it. So it automatically understands that mm, today it looks like we have 50,000 people. Let's allocate more resources so that when people visit your web app, the, your, web, your, web, your web app doesn't say that, you know, um, not available at the moment, right? It doesn't cry of, you know, storage not being enough, right? So these are some of the few things that you can actually, you know, um, expect when you are using Azure as, you know, your your cloud, your service provider. All right. So um, moving on is that also it, it, allows, it allows you to, you know, focus on designing and building your app because immediately Microsoft Azure takes care of all the other things for you. All you just need to do is to focus on, you know, building your web app. Right. So that is what is important. So this allows businesses to move even very faster because if you want to build your web app, oh, don't worry, just go to Microsoft Azure, portal.azure.com, and then, you know, create it as service. You pay as you go. You don't get charged upfront and all those stuff, right? So those are really fun stuff with Azure App Service. Now, Azure App Service also has something called deployment slots, right? So for example, um, you have your web app that you've built, right? And then this, your web app actually exists within your, um, you know, you, this your web your web app is like is what everyone in the world, okay? When the, you okay, just imagine this that you you visit some of you know your school portal or something, right? But the point is that that you know portal that you visit or yeah that uh, portal that you visit is only um it's production, like it is what everyone sees around the world. So if the developers have to make changes, okay, on their local machine and then they push that changes to the world, um, they need to test it. They need to be able to test it to see that, uh, um, is this web app going to work, like the functionalities that we implemented, would it work on you know, the cloud or not, right? So you will need like, you know, a testing environment. So the testing environment is what we are called, we, we term as you know, the ability to add you know, staging slots, right? So you add additional slots, right? You add additional, I mean, like you create like two different things one for production and one for testing, right? When your testing um, is, is good enough to go, you push it to production, okay? When I talk about pushing to production, it means you push it online, then everyone around the world would have access to it, okay? So I hope this makes sense. Um, we also have continuous integration deployment support, okay? When you are using, um, when you are using Azure to host your web app, um, all you just need to do is to commit. Don't worry if you are new to GitHub, I promise you I'm going to run you through just some few basics command that you need to know. Even as a pro developer, that is what I use to build all the tools that you know my company needs, right? So I will just show you the same way you can do it, all right? So um, out of the box, continuous integration and deployment with Azure DevOps, GitHub, Bitbucket. So you, if you have your web app you know, um, on, on GitHub, and GitHub is like uh, version control, right? So it, it allows you to be able to, let's say, um, if you do any changes to your, your code or your web app, you push it to GitHub as your first change, right? If you do a second change, you push it again. If you do a third change, you push it again. Now, what happens is that there are times when maybe um, when you push the final changes, your app is going to break. And if it breaks, it means that people are not going to have access to it, right? Because the code might be wrong. So what happens is that with, virtual, with version control, you have the ability to be able to, you know, roll back the changes that you just did and then, you know, um, do some fun stuff, right? Com like, you know, correct yourself and push it back again. So that's like 
version control, version one, version two, version three, controlling it, right? Um, so with continuous integration and uh, deployment slot, you actually have, you know, the availability or the flexibility to be able to um, do some fun stuff on your own, right? Um, so it's like once you commit, the changes will take effect. I promise you I'm going to show you this in action. Do not worry. This is not about a talking slot, but I just wanted all of you to get a gist of, you know, what it takes. So we have also built in auto scale support. I explained it from the beginning that, you know, you supporting 50 users, you think your your users that are going to use your system is only 50, right? So the space that you or the story that you put together is, is going to be targeting those people. But immediately, you know, your users are 50,000. Then it means your app is going to have traffic. It's like, you know, building a one way road, right? And then having a lot of cars on it. And then like you, you, you expected that only, you know, 50 cars would be on it. And then all of a sudden you have 50 million cars on that road. You're going to call traffic, right? So similarly, we have traffic on web apps uh, when you didn't allocate enough resources for it. So scaling up and scaling down is one thing that you can do within Microsoft Azure. Either add more resources or compute storage, stuff like that. And um, when building your, creating your web app in Microsoft Azure, you would need some few things like subscription, resource groups, app name, publish, runtime stack, operating system, region, app service, uh, app service plan. Do not worry. I know you are going to be thinking about, oh, this guy is killing us with all the terminologies, but trust me, I'm not killing you, all right? I'm giving you the right dosage. Now, what happens is that when we talk about subscription, it's like when you are subscribing to an app, you, you subscribe with a little thing, right? You, you subscribe with maybe, um, it's like you buying data, right? So you subscribe per what your amounts can afford, right? So subscription is like the account that you've created and then the amount you've allocated to that particular, you know, account, okay? Um, resource group has to do with, you know, grouping all the resources that you have. For example, you have like, you know, a database, you have like series of resources. Don't worry, you, you get to know about that as well. So putting your web app in a folder, right? It's like, you know, logically um, putting your, your, your web apps or your applications into a specific directory or a folder and then naming it so that you are able to find it easily. App name is basically your application name. You know, when, when, you are, when you are ready, how do you push your code? How do you want to push your code? All those stuff uh, uh, has to do with, you know, publish. I'll show you this in, in action very soon. Uh, we also have operating system. We have runtime stack. For example, your app is built in one of these technologies called PHP, Node.js, or any other thing. So you have to target, you know, that particular stack that, you know, you are building your app within, right? And also, um, when when we go back to publish, then we are talking about, you know, um, when you are publishing your app, you can be, you know, publishing it as, you know, a, as a code base, or you can publish it as, you know, a, a Docker, like, you know, uh, image, right? So um, don't worry if you don't know about a doc, Docker or something, you, you will get to run through some of these few things in, in a minute. Um, uh, and also we have operating system. So whether your app is supposed to run on Windows 10, how did you build your, your web app? Did you build it on you know, Windows 10, Windows device or Linux or something? You'll be able to you know, select. If you select operating system, you have application insights. So that there are like some uh, telemetry data that would be given to you. For example, how many people are, you know, um, you know you, how people are visiting your website, those stuff, like, right? All those things come when you are using Windows. So you get it for free. And region is basically has to do with where exactly uh, are your users going to come from? Are you, is your target audience that you are building your website for, are they in India or Ghana? Are they in Africa? Are they in, you know, uh, America? So you choose that particular region. Then the last one is actually choosing app service plan. So the app service plan is more or less like allocating resources that you need for your, you know, your app service, your your application. They get that, the idea. So like the, I mean, the resources that you need is the app service plan. I hope this is making sense to you. I'm taking time to explain all this. Even if you're a fresher, trust me, it will be fine with you very soon. Um, so uh, yes. Let me see, what do I have here? Uh, yeah, so um, I would come back to this slide, okay? Uh, I'll be running a course very soon, like, you know, in 10 days time, I'll, I'll announce that to you, but 
let's let's go and do some fun stuff, right? Maybe you are like, oh, Dawood just killed us with all these terminologies. What does he mean? Then, you know, <laughs> you are getting mad at yourself because you don't know about it. Don't worry. Let's go and then build something together. So I'm just going to share my screen and then we get to do some fun stuff. Um, so then just post in the chat. Are you learning something new at all? And hit on the subscribe button. Hit on the like button. Let me know if you are learning something new. Okay, so let's do this very quickly. I'm just going to share my web app. Uh, or, yep, I'm just going to do that. Um, where are you? Uh, share my screen. And uh, I'm going to share screen one. Okay, just in a few minutes or seconds, you'll be there. Post it in the chat if you just joined us. Let me know if you're learning something new. Am I going too fast that you don't understand? Just let me know. So I will be able to slow down for you, okay? Okay. All right, so I'll take feedbacks. Okay, uh, I'm sharing my screen in a bit. Hello. Okay. Um. All right, so this is cool. So see, I talked about portal.azure.com, right? Right in here. Okay. So I'm doing that, okay? Uh, wow. Box. Okay, you are you haven't lost me. Don't worry, I'm okay. Um, boop, boop, boop. All right, so I'm just going to load my Azure portal. So I just went to portal.azure.com. I will just have to sign in, okay, with my account. Okay, and once I sign in, uh, because I've already you know used Azure, so it's not allowing me. It's not telling me that you know I should log in. It's already you know logging me in. Okay, so what I'm going to do is that you see Azure portal. This is how cool it looks like. Let me just run you through it quickly, then we move on. Okay, so when you look at the Azure portal, it has like the cloud show, it has, you know, uh, subscriptions, and it had all this cool stuff. And it's showing you how much you spend so far. So Azure is very transparent. Transparency is one thing that Azure doesn't joke with. Okay, so when you visit your web app, you have this, you know, navigation bar. Okay, and these are called blades. You can just move this up and down to substitute you know the arrangement this is really cool with microsoft azure all right uh, but the cool thing is that everything you build within your microsoft azure you build within microsoft azure portal has to do with a, it's called a resource okay so i'm just going to click on create a new resource once i click on create a resource i will then type that i want web app fox can you see it here you can type that you want you know web app here okay and it will be listed for you. You can even see it in here. You can also search right in here at the top, and it will also be listed for you, all right? But I'm just going to click that I want a web app. Okay. So um, it means that I'm ready to deploy my web application, right? Do not worry if you don't know about web app, you don't know how to create a website, do not worry at all. In a few minutes, you're just going to be seeing me doing some fun stuff together with you. Okay, so it's loaded. I will select my resource group. So what happens is that I've already explained all these things to you, right? This is my subscription that I'm using when I created the account. And then I will then create a resource group. So resource group is just like I want to logically, you know, um, name or, or put this into a specific folder so that I can easily search for it and manage it as well. So I'm just going to call this, you know, lead check resource group, RG. Okay, so you see how I'm naming it. I just want to make sure that I I come back to this and I'm able to you know manage it very well. Okay, so I'll then give my web app a name. Maybe it's called Lead Tech Global. Okay, so once you give your app a name, see here it's called Lead Lead Tech Global dot Azure Website dot net, right? So once you do that, you can then select. If your application, you are publishing it from as a code base, right? Or you are just publishing it as, you know, Docker container. So Docker container would, you know, come in. It's, it's like when you are deploying your web app, then you deploy the operating system and all the configuration available, right? Um, that is, you know, you can search on Docker and then read more about it. But I'm just going to keep this to code. And I would then select the runtime 
which I'm building this web application. Say I'm building this web application in PHP. Say I'm building this web application in Node, right? Then I'll select. Okay, don't worry if you don't know about Node.js as well. Um, then I'll select the location, the region. Okay, some of these regions, when you select, you don't get, you know, um, some features available. So I'll just select the closest region, you know, to you if the resource is available. If not, select the next one. So I'll leave it central US. And once I'm done with that, you know, also, um, when I scroll down a bit, we have Linux plan, right? Uh, so this is my app service plan. You can create a new app service plan by just clicking on this, okay? And that would look, allocate, you know, the resource that you, you need for you, okay? So once you have that, we also have SKU and size, right? So this is like the size at which you are deploying your web application, all right? So you can see I'm using the basic B100 total ACU um, storage, right? I can change this if I want, okay? So let me just take you through creating a basic app service plan. So I'll just call it lead tech plan. All right, just click on, okay? And once I do that, you see it is asking me to, uh, it's giving me a default size, like, you know, three gigabytes RAM, like that's the um, space I've allocated to this particular plan, right? I can click on change to change it, okay? Um, when I click on change, it will show me the series of sizes that I can deploy my web app in. If I want more storage, because I know um, my app is going to be one of the biggest thing in the world, so I might need more spaces, right? Now, depending on each and every one of these that you select, you also get, you know, um, you pay for more, right? And then you get more functionality. For example, if your application is production, which means that the application you're about to build is not like you are testing it. You already know you are deploying it online there. Then you choose production, and then you choose any of this storage that is available for you. You can see this is 7 gigabytes memory, and this is 14 gigabytes memory, right? And we also have this dev test, okay? So if you are developing, then you just select the dev test, and then uh, in, if you are just testing what you are doing, then you just select the dev test. And then you also select B1, okay? So you select each and every any of this if it works in your case. But remember, if you select any of this, you might not get the other things available. For example, custom SSL and um, also domain name. Do not worry, you get to understand all this in a short while. So I will just select the default, which is available for me. And... And if I select that, then I can just click on Nest. When I click on Nest, then I can select, you know, that I want application insights. And once I do that, I can then select on tax and I can tag what I'm doing, right? I can select a tag. And once I'm done, I'll click on review and create. Um, once I select review and create, it will just show me all the things that I've done. And once I have, you know, I review that I'm good to go, then I can click on create. Okay. Uh, so I'll just click on create. Okay. Um, just in a short while, sorry for the background noise a bit. Okay. Um, so I, my app will be deployed. Once my app is deployed, it would all be here. Um, you would see all the resources here. So, Fox, go ahead and tell me in the chat if I'm moving too fast. If you are learning something new, just let me know. All right. Um, well, we actually, well, we actually, okay. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you so much for letting us know that you know you are learning a lot. My, my mic was muted. I was just saying, um, yeah, someone in the chat oh. was saying the, the speed was good. Um, you know, we've got a lot of good feedback. So, yeah, keep keep up the good work. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, Thank you so like, much. Even easy to understand English and stuff. Um, teaching is very oh. good. You know, amazing. Um, yeah, amazing. So thank, thank you, everyone. <laughs> thank you, David. Um, yeah, if you're thank asking you about the much. certificate, don't worry, in the break, we will give you the form to get the certificate. Yeah, and we are just um, short while to our break, right? So just prompt me, how many minutes do we have to go for a three minute break? I think we'll, we'll have that in about five minutes and then. Uh, we'll okay, the awesome, awesome. So I'm just gonna do this. Um, so see in here that my deployment is complete. Once your deployment is complete, Azure gives you a feedback that, hey Dawood, your deployment is complete. You can click on go to resource. Once you click on go to resource, I mean, your web app is deployed. Fox, 
I know you think I'm joking, but I'm just going to show you that I'm not joking, all right? So see what is going to happen. You are going to be able to visit this URL in your browser. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So I'm just going to do this. Um, so okay. Someone should mute himself. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, so you see here, yeah. I have Lead Tech Global, all right? Let me zoom in so that you're able to see my screen very well. Oh, I think it's not zooming to uh, the address bar, but it's okay. It's fine. All right. So, Salman, you can paste this in the chat for them. It's called leadtechglobal.azurewebsite.net. This is what we just built. And already, you can visit this wherever you are, whether you are in the U.S., whether you are in India, whether you are in Ghana. You can visit this in your browser, okay? Okay. So, um, now, let's say you've built your web app. How do you then put your web app to replace this? For example, let me go to dawoodidris.com. Okay. And you can see in here that dawoodidris.com loads up with, you know, a custom um, web pages that I have created, right? See in here, it shows you a beautiful website, right? So how do we, this is also web, hosted on web, you know, Azure, um, you know, using Azure Web App as well, okay? So when you come to here, you will see it's showing you a default template. How do you replace this, okay? So we are just going to replace this in a bit. But before we do that, let me just go to my desktop and show you something, okay? So, oh, 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 showing too much details here. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to do something very quickly. I'm just going to go to a folder called Code. It's just a normal folder, do not worry. It's not different from what you have. And then I'll create a folder there. So the folder I'm going to create is going to call Lead Tech Global. Okay. Um, so I've created a folder called Lead Tech Global. Okay. I'm just going to open uh, my test editor. All of you have this. Okay. So I'm just going to use that. Just type on Notepad. Okay. Once I type Notepad, I'll click on it. Once I click on Notepad, you know, it generates a file for me. I'll save this file as an HTML file, okay? So I'm just going to click and then click on save. Once I click on save, it pops up and tell me to save it. In saving it, I can name this as index, okay? You remember index um, as a word in your books, right? So it's like the first page you go to, right? Then you select that, I want all files. But notice that I called it .html. If I say .mp3, you know this is going to be an audio file, right? but it's not an audio file. So it's supposed to be called HTML so that the web browser will be able to understand, hey, Fox, this is actually a web application and you need to run it as such. So I'll click on save and automatically I have, you know, I've created a web app. I've created a, a web page, right? See in here, when I open this, it's pretty blank because we've not put it in it. Go, some, uh, go slow, a little bit slow. Okay, yeah, thank you. There are people who are telling that you are going to fast. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you so much. I don't want them to sleep. Please mute yourself. Thank you. Um, I don't want them to sleep. That's why I'm going a bit faster. Because uh, if it is slow, people will start sleeping whilst watching. <laughs> so I'm just going to name this as, you know, we created, you just created a web app. I'm just going to call this HTML. And see, um, I do less than greater than sign. Then I close it and I say HTML, right? So immediately, this has been inserted. I can then give it like, you know, my HTML page would have a head. I want to change what is here from index.html at this top part to something called lead tech global. So I'll create a head. Okay. And once I have the head, I'll then create that I want um, title. Thank you very much for letting me know that I was moving fast. I was just doing it because of you. So I will slow down a bit just because of you so that you can get it more. So I'll call this Lead Tech Global. Okay. Then once I'm done naming this, I can then come in here and then I'll close the head that was opened. Uh, you see how the structure looks like. So it's more or less like just your ordinary sheet that you have within school, right? You have like a header, you have, you know, the body part and you have the footer part, right? So I have, you know, HTML and I have the head. In the head has a title, just like your book. You always write titles there, right? Then when I'm done, I'll just yeah, have to make sure that... Mm -hmm. um, if everyone wants to follow along, I think this is a good point to just have the, the break. And 
so they can look at your screen, they can look at the code and see what structure you've got set up. So do you think we, we, we can uh, uh, leave off with a question for the yeah. week and uh, give them a task? Yes. Yes, exactly. So um, I think, Salman, let me just do this paragraph absolutely. within it so Sorry that it that. Yeah. Yes. So No, no, no. It's, it's absolutely fine. Thank you very much for calling. It's out there. This is a perfect place to, you know, go on break. So we will go on three minute breaks. Okay, so see what I'm doing. You're going to see this when you visit the web app soon. So once I'm done, I refresh here and you can see that it says that go on break on three minutes break, right? And the title part has also changed. This is very basic. If you are if you are not new to, uh, I mean, web app, you might feel like that is just repeating what I know. Don't worry. I will not go further than this anymore. So we are going on three minutes break. I think we'll be back soon. Um, whilst on the break, tell them what exactly they are supposed to expect. Awesome. Thank you so much, David. That was really amazing. So, um, yeah, we've got the form in the break, which you can go ahead and, like, you know, use. Thing, uh, Omkar or Ajinkya, do you want to explain how the forms work? I put one of them in the chat on YouTube. That's where you can yeah. see that. Yeah, sure. So guys, I will just uh, first brief you, like, uh, if you guys uh, want certificates, you have to first fill the attendance form. Uh, we have already provided uh, the link in the live chat, so go on and fill the form. Yeah, so, yeah, that's it. Awesome, so uh, you can see it's being spammed in the chat right now. Um, yeah, so that's part one. There will be a second form later on as well. So don't forget to stay for that. Let us know as well. What do you want to see in the future with the episodes? Do hit that like button and subscribe. And send Dawood some love on Twitter. It's Dawood Idris. His link's in the description. Show him that you uh, yeah. love him. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Salman. Um, and, and to all of you, please um, click on the subscribe button and then click on the like if you like the... Uh, the video, you like how we are doing it. Uh, I promise you, this is not just the basic thing we are going to do. You are going to learn more things like, you know, adding um, URL, a custom URL, like your name.com, like I have dowdedris.com so that people are able to find your website with your name and all that. So we are just going to add them very soon. I'm going to show you how you can do that. Someone, do, do, do you care about giving them something like, I mean, a tune for one minute before we come back? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, let's yeah. Do that. Please tweet and tag me. Tweet and tag me. My name is Dawood Idris. And tag MS Inspire. All right. So your music's coming up. For I've got ads on YouTube. And let me go on my other YouTube account. Mm -hmm. This is why uh, YouTube... Premium is actually good for ads. Yeah, this is gonna be uh, random music. I have no idea. Don't judge my music taste. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm walking alone, the streets are empty. The only thing I can see is my own silhouette. I'm getting stronger, step by step. The clock is sick. There's no time for me I've been flying from town to town Dawood, our people are actually enjoying the session. And thanks for playing that music in the background, Salman. And <laughs> thank you so much for. Oh, God bless you. Thank you. This is your chance. You've got one minute. If you need to go to the toilet, if you need to 
you know, get the mail if you need to go feed your chickens, if you need to go, you know, help your daughter go to the farm. Let us know what you need to do. Whatever it is. And then you can come back to listen to Dawi. <laughs> In one minute too. Don't go fast. Yeah, 35 seconds. Now. Awesome. Yeah. Guys, you can also post a question if you want. Uh, Dauda will answer every one of them. Just uh, post it on the chat so that we can know that uh, if you guys are actually enjoying it and learning something new. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know if this time is going to make it sound the Q&A system will be there at the end there yeah. will be a 10, 10 minute Q&A system at the end so we'll take all your questions at the end cool so we've got uh, it's end of timer so we can stop this music now hope you all enjoyed that and it's time for Dawood to come back hello Dawood are you there Earth to yes I'm, I'm right here <laughs> awesome yeah, so you can see on the screen that this is my URL. If you, need, if you want to check out more, YouTube, you know, um, web app stuff that I've done, you can check it out right here on YouTube. Just type in, you know, Dawood Idris. And also right here on this channel, MSP Inspire, you can check up, you know, some of the episodes that I've done on web apps. Okay, and this uh, very episode will also be left for you. I think this is the link that you are supposed to visit to be able to take your attendance right certificate to be given so make sure that you are actually taking your attendance okay so that you'll be awarded certificates as such okay so i hope you've already done this uh thank you very much oops this is awesome can we just continue yes we can uh so i'm just going to come down here and you can see we have our website now let's try We've also created, you know, a simple web page with this. Um, what I'm going to do next is to use something called Git, okay? So to install Git, you just go, have to go to here and say Git um, bash. I don't know, maybe Git download. Uh, yeah. And once you hit on Git download, it will take you to git scm. And when you click there, you will get more, you know, um, you can download this thing called GitHub. You can just click on it to download if you're using Windows. If you're using Linux, you see it as well to be able to download. Okay, so once you download and then you click, click, click to just install, there's nothing special. Click next and accept. Then you will find out that GitHub has been installed on your desktop. So with GitHub being installed on your desktop, what you have to do is to navigate, to move to the path where you have your web application, right, created. You remember ours was in code directory and it, on my desktop. So I'll move to desktop, okay, and I'll move to a folder called code, and I'll just try list all the folders that I have. You can see I have as part of them called Lead Tech Global. So I'll CD into Lead Tech Global, okay, and I am into Lead Tech Global right now. So when I just do LS, you will find out that I have index.html, the, fo the file that we just created, just this file, okay? Now, at this point, what you can do is to initialize the, and tell GitHub that this is a Git project, right? GitHub should take over it. So you just type Git in it. And once you type Git in it, you know, uh, a behind the scene, uh, a hidden folder would be added to you know, this particular folder that we have, okay? And that gives you, that tells the project that this is supposed to be, you know, linked to a GitHub uh, page, okay? Once you have that, you can then type git add, okay? So it's like I'm adding this particular file, index.html file into the folder that was, the hidden folder that was created, so that when I push it online, it will go together with, you know, the hidden folder and it will know that I'm talking about, you know, a project called GitHub, uh, okay? So once I type git add, it has been added. I can type git status. These are the very commands that you need even if you are working in a professional company. I use this all the time. Many folks, you know, who build amazing stuff, use all this stuff. So you can see that a new file was created called index.html. Now, if I'm okay with the file that I created, then I can say that git, okay? 
commit. I've added it to the, you know, the folder, but now I have to commit that, yes, I accept this change to go to, you know, to go online. So I'll just type git commit. And once I type git commit, I can then type M, which means I'm going to add my message and I'll say initial commit. Or I will say first commit. Okay. All right. So once you do that, you mean, I mean, um, also you see that I added here, um, let me just zoom in a bit. I think so. Um, okay. All right. I want you to see all the comments. So you could see here that I did something called git init to initialize the project, git add dot, which means if there were 50,000 files, I want all of them, all the changes I made to be added. And git status to check my, the status of my, you know, uh, my project. And we can see new file was created. However, I've not added it to the repository which was created. So then I commit that, hey guys, add it to it. Once you add it, notice that it will generate some form of, you know, ID attached to this comment, this chain that you just made, meaning that you're going to manage your versions, right? So when I type something called get log, it's going to show me, you know, the log, which you can see in here that, okay, this is the log that I just created, right? Which means that anytime I want to revert back to this particular version, I can just, you know, uh, check out within this particular uh, version and then I'll have it in there. But it also gives you quoting like author being Dawood Idris, so it shows you that if you are collaborating on a project and series of people are making change on this particular project, it means that whoever commits, you know, would have a log file in his name, right? Okay, so um, let's do this. Um, you can see the date and time and everything that was added and even the commits message. So once I'm okay with it, I'll push this online. Now let's go to GitHub. So with Git bash or Git I manage it, you know, offline. With GitHub, it's online, right? So you need to create an account. Fox, if you're a student, make sure that you have a GitHub account and then you start creating projects, okay? So I'm going to create a new project. So you create an account and then you come in here and then you click on this plus icon to create a new repository. It's like creating a new project. Then I'll give this, you know, a name called Lead Tech Global. Okay, once this name is validated to be, you know, a unique name under my, you know, my account, I, will, I can give it an optional description and then I'll select whether it should be private or, you know, uh, public. If it is private, it means that no one would get to see it. If it is public, it means once I commit it, all of you on, you know, um, learning with us will be able to find your way into, you know, um, this code, okay, and you can download it. So this is how you make it public and then it become open source and people are able to contribute to this, okay? Then once you are done, if, you know, skip this if uh, this step if you are importing an existing repository. Remember, we just created a repository by saying get in it on our desktop, right? So we don't need to check this up. Once we are done, we can click on create repository. And if you click on create repository, your repository is going to be created for you, an empty one, of course. And this empty repository is giving you some source of code, right? In here, it says that, hey, folks, um, if you need to create a new repository, this is how you do it. Git init, you remember we've done all this. Git add, we've already done this. Git commit, we've done that, so we don't need that, right? So I think what we need is an existing repository to be pushed. So we have this command and then this command that we've not added yet. So the first command will link our project with what is online. And the second command will then push the project that we have offline to online. So I'm just going to copy this, okay? And then I'll come to this particular, and I'll paste it. Once I paste it, you know, this is added. Once I paste it, this is added, right? Uh, to This is like linked to my repository, which is online, right? And when I type on git push minus u, it's like the user um, to be, you know, that I'm using the origin and I'm using master, which is online. So once I'm done, I'll just click on enter and okay, um, yes. So you can see, I just pasted it in there and then, you know, we are done. It's online. Our code that we just typed on our local machine is online right now. Let me come back here to just show you that it's worked. Let's refresh this and you can see that this particular application is right, right now. The index file is online already, which says initial comments, right? by Dawood Idris. So this is how a lot of people get to create a lot of things and then it shows how many contributors are on the project and all those stuff. 
So once we have it set, we can then come to our, you know, Azure portal. Remember we did this be before we went on the break, right? Now, this gives you a very cool insight to, you know, your app URL. It gives you your app location. It gives you your Visual Studio, you know, subscription that you selected and uh, also the subscription ID and a huge amount of things. But as part of them is because I'm hosting it on Windows, gives me a telemetry data telling me that uh, you guys have actually visited this website. It's not only me. See how it is showing me the input and output request that it's been made and what time it was made, right? And it tells me that, how oh, okay, 29 of you have already clicked on it. Okay, thank you so much for clicking on this. And one thing that we now need to do is to change this particular default template which was given to us. So let's just do that in a second. Once we want to do that, we go to Deployment Center, okay? Um, when I click on Deployment Center, it would essentially allow me to link this particular project on my GitHub account to online. And this is where continuous integration, continuous, de uh, you know, deployment comes in, right? CICD comes in, okay? And uh, right in here, I can select, because I was using GitHub, I'll just select GitHub. There are Bitbucket and Co. You can read more about them, but I'll select GitHub. Because I was already logged in, you see it's identifying my name as Dawood Idris. But if this is your first time, you will just have to provide your credential. And I'll click on continue. But if I want to change the account, I can change the account as well. Then I'll click on continue. Okay, just take some few seconds and it will continue for me. Okay, remember I'm selecting that I want. Uh, okay, so I have the option. There is this preview. So this is not generally available. It's available to some specific users. I'm qualified to use it, so I can use it. It's like it will automatically, you know, do some some CI, CI CD behind the scenes stuff for me. But do not worry. Let's use App Service Build here okay so i'll select that and i'll click on continue okay once i click on continue you see it shows me my github name and also it shows that i have a series of repository which one in particular do i want to link the one we just created is called lead tech global right um yes which is right in here so once i select that i can then select you know if i have series of branches we're not going to talk much about branches here but if you check on Dawood Idris on youtube i have full I mean, um, course dedicated to GitHub, so you can check it up. And once you type on this, you've selected, you know, the branch and everything, you click on continue, and it will just give you an overview of what you just selected, and then you click on finish if you are very sure. Once you click on finish, this is going to, the web app that you just created, right, is going to replace the template which was generated for you on in Microsoft Azure. So I'm just going to refresh this, and you can see that, voila, in just some few seconds, everything will be replaced here. We would have the web app that we just created replaced in there. So you can see that it is seeing that running, and then it's giving us status of you know whether this is you know done or not, and it's telling me that the initial commit you know it grabs everything that I did within that particular repository, replaces it right in here. Okay, jeez, uh, what's happening? Hey, Fox, you need to replace this. Uh, let's see slash index dot html it was okay this is a wrong url let's see what happens again okay so it's still not replaced yet let's see what is happening what are we supposed to do to get this to work right now uh, let me know if it's working for you there are times where maybe caching or something might be the case uh let me Search in here. I uh, think I should open it in incognito mode and see uh, private mode and see whether it gets replaced. Bruce, you are taking more time. Okay, so um, I think I'll check back this in a few seconds to see whether everything is deployed. But that is how simple you get to deploy your web app that you just created. Now, the next thing I'm just going to do because of time is to show you. Um, how you can add a custom domain, okay, in Microsoft Azure. So I'll click in here. Then for the love of, you know, the love I have for you, I'm going to use my credit to buy um, a domain called Lita Global. So you can purchase a domain right here in Microsoft Azure. You don't need to purchase it anywhere. But if you have an existing one, you can import it. If you want to check that app, just check on my YouTube channel or MSP Inspire. I think 
we covered one episode on it as well. So uh, just write this episode, hit on subscribe, and then check it up there. Uh, I'll click on buy domain, and I will search for the domain that I want. This domain that I want is called Lead Tech Global. So I'll just search on Lead Tech Global. Okay. And it will just search if this domain is available. Okay. Okay, let's see whether this guy... Uh, has Daoud, by the way, check your uh, GitHub. Salman said okay. that it's empty. Oh, the uh, I see. <laughs> All right, then I'll just check it out uh, in a few minutes. Okay, so let me see. So leadtechglobal.com is available. We can use that. I can purchase that. Um, let me just purchase that for now. Or lead tech, you know, it's suggesting all the ones that are available for you. So I would select the one that I want, and I will uh, enter that yes, I want this. So and I want a, that was a screenshot from before. Um, oh, okay. okay. All right. Cool. So we have www. We have you know root domain. I can select whatever you know to be added. Okay. And once I'm done, I'll just click on okay. Once I click on OK, okay, it's asking me to make sure to fill in all these spaces. I'm just going to select all of them. So I'll give, you know, my name and everything should be entered here. OK, I don't have a middle name, but I have first name, which is Dauda and um, Idris. So I have Dawood and Idris. And then I will select my job title, software, dev, or developer just enter some small details so that they know who you are and my email can be gmail or my student partner account okay once i'm done i would then so that everything if they need anything it can be emailed to me i'll just copy this once again and i'll paste it in here and I'll select the country code that I am in. It's Ghana, so I'll just select Ghana. Once I'm done, I'll type in my phone number. Sorry for doing all this. I want you to be able to do it too. Um, once I'm done, I will then select all the required field. This is going to like PO box, um, something. Don't worry, this is not my actual PO box account, but I just don't want you to track me. <laughs> and I'll select that I want my country is called Ghana. Okay. And I'll select the state is still called Ghana. I will select the city is Accra. I live in Accra. I will select the postal code, which is 00233. I would hit on down here. So see, Fox, you need to just put in all these details and click on OK. Once, you know, it's validated that all fields have been filled successfully, you go to the next one, right? Um, I hope this CICD thing gets to work so that you see everything in action. Why is it taking so much time? Uh, and then I will click in here, lead the global. Yep, yep. Yes, this is enabled. I'll click on OK. Privacy protection is accepted. I think basically we have everything now, right? So we can go ahead and then scroll down. See, okay, we have last time, last in legal terms. Let's accept it very quickly. Yes, I accept. And I would just scroll down and click on OK. It means it will validate once again to see whether I inputted every credential. So I'm just purchasing a domain name. Um, once this domain name is done, we then assign it to our website so that instead of visiting this long URL, you visit just leadtechglobal.com. Um, once it is done, it will be listed down in down here for me. Okay, I'll just click on this again to see if it is done. It will just give me a prompt. Please put in your questions in the comment and let me answer them. All right. Uh, I think my time is up already, but I just want to make sure that we are on you know the same page right now. Uh, okay, it's still deploying. It's still purchasing the. It, so it will, de it will deduct it from my account. Okay, that's what's going to happen. This is going to deduct it from my account. Uh, please put all your questions in the chat, and I would make sure to, you know, check it up. Uh, and this is the code that we wrote initially. Um, I'm hoping that I didn't do anything nasty. That is why the CICD is not working. Then, uh, so once I I did this, and someone told me in the chat that it works for him. I was like, okay. 
All right, so let's see. Let's see what happens um, if everything goes as according to plan. Hey, Fox, I hope you, you didn't lose me, right? Okay. So it's validating the order. It's purchasing the app service domain. Uh, I hope this gets, you know, resolved soon, okay? All right, so once we are done with... I think we've lost connection to David and... Is it just me or we lost David? Yeah, I think, I think. I think this happens yeah, sometimes, people. Tell me. It's okay. Uh, okay. I think we lost David here in the, in the internet. <laughs> Yeah. Um, oh shit. Uh, so, um, let's okay, wait for so some yes, time. Yes, let's wait for some yeah, time, yeah. and yeah, I'll until then. I'll until then, Simon. Yeah. Until then, we'll uh -huh. we'll uh, we'll post the part two of the form which we created. Okay, I'll just yeah. post it. I just want you know, come here, break. Don't worry, I'm right here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He's back. The internet went to commercial break. Okay, so um, I'll just share my screen again. So you see everything in here. Uh, sorry about that. Commercial breaks are very important. Okay, um, just in a short while, I'll be sharing my screen. Okay. It's all good. Okay, so I'm sure you are able to hear me right now. You can see that Lead Tech Global has been added. However, it is showing that Lead Tech Global is not secured. So we need to make it secured, okay? So we go to um, TLS SSL certificates. So we click on there. And then when we click on SSL certificates, we can then click on whether we want to add a specific binding to our SSL certificate, which we want to create, okay? So once I am okay with this, I can just create, you know, um, one, a, a certificate for my app. Uh, so in creating a certificate, I need to precede it with www. That is the only one. Naked domains are not allowed. For naked domains, which means just something like natedglobal.com, you would have to purchase an SSL certificate. Someone said they are working on it, but you need to make sure you are preceding it with something dot litech global in terms of this www so i'm um, just you know creating a free ssl certificate uh now ssl certificate allows you to secure yourself so that uh, attackers cannot you know just steal information credit card information from someone so it is like encryption based so even if they they intercept within a network when someone is visiting your web application or making payments it will be encrypted. So what they will get, they will not be able to understand that particular message, okay? I'm um, clicking on create. Once I click on create, um, yep, SSL certificate is created for me in here, healthy one. I can now go to my custom domains once again. And in my custom domains, I can now click on add binding to this guy. So I'll bind this particular domain with the certificate which was generated, which is right in here. So you can see, I'll then choose um sni uh, I, uh, I think yeah sni ssl so once i select choose certificate i'll choose a certificate that i was using custom domain would be that and i'll click on add binding which means that in just a short while you all are going to visit your browser with this particular url instead of the long url and you would have it as you know you know this is how you you know you you, you create you purchase a domain, and then this is how you, at the same time, um, you know, assign it to your web application in Microsoft Azure. So you can see www.litechglobal.com has been configured to point to this particular application. So that was cool thing. We learned basics of bit, uh, Git commands that you need, to, you know, to, to work in a professional company. These are the very... We also learn how you can host your web app on Microsoft Azure. We learn how you can push your code to GitHub. We learn how you can configure SSL certificates, how you can also do domain names. All these are really cool stuff. I do not know why this didn't get to work, but I don't think we have too much time to figure it out right now. So on this note, I think I won't take much of your time. My time is up already. Put your questions in the chat and let me get to answer it.
Sundar just uh, put the part two of the form for uh, them to fill the fill the details for the certificate. Yep. Uh, Dawood, uh, someone uh, J- Jackson asked that is it possible to deploy a web app dynamic built using PHP and is dependent on my SQL? Yes. On my SQL. It is possible. Yes. Yes. So um, in deploying your web app, in hosting your web app, you can host it with the Azure web app or you can deploy a virtual machine to be able to do that. So if you need like, you know, more customization on your own, you know, in terms of level, in terms of the thing that you want to select and install or composer and those stuff to be able to, um, you know, SSH into them, Hello. you can use, you know, virtual machine to host Hello. your web app, as well as you can even use the Azure app service. You remember when we were selecting, we also selected a part which was saying that you should enter your stack, right? So that was um, the part where we got to took care of that. So in here, it was saying that select your runtime stack. So that is where you select that your app is going to be PHP or something, and those resources are going to be available to you. I hope that makes sense. Uh, yeah, I would, I would, yes, I would totally. like to add that, also, you know, Akash, it's Akash up to you question, how much you're going to... How to deploy be... Angular 8 and Node app that run on the different boards? Yes, um, thank you very much for your question. Um, so on that note, I have um, on 2nd of July, um, it will be announced on Twitter, I'll be doing one session on Node.js. So even if you don't know Node.js, I'm going to be covering that. And Cosmos, Cosmos DB, like, you know, doing uh, MongoDB and all those stuff on Microsoft Azure. So check out for my Twitter account, Dawood Idris, um, at Dawood Idris. It will be announced by the organization very soon. It's a surprise to everyone, including myself. Yeah, so I was just going to add that. It's up to you how much, you know, you want to start going into infrastructure as a service if you want to do platform as a service. If you want the, you know, the OS and, you know, all the infrastructure to be managed for you, just go ahead, use the Azure app service, which David has shown. But if, you know, you want more control, if you want to start using virtual machines, then go ahead, you've got that infrastructure as a service. It's that whole idea of having that, like, you know, hybrid cloud. You're able to, you know, you know go between the whole... Thing. Uh, if you want to start using more, you can then go into, you know, software as a service. And that's, you know, that's, for example, you could use Outlook. That's an example of software as a service. Um, that's the beauty yep. of Azure and the hybrid cloud. That's very true. So please um, go out. I mean, there is a link there to give you a certificate. Make sure you fill it out and you'll be getting your certificate. And also, if you check on here, I have some cool links for you. If you're not able to grab them, don't worry. Please follow me on Twitter and just tag me and tell me to share my presentation with you, all right? You know, give me your comment and then I would make sure to share this presentation slide with you. Oh, thank you so much for leaving all your wonderful comments and you've been amazing, all of you in the comments. Thank you, thank you, Dawuda, for this great session and uh, it was very much informative and all, all the people who have joined the session, they really loved the session. So it was really nice. It, it was like, I can read the comments. It is like, thanks for such a wonderful session by Rashmi, by Jackson. It's awesome work, Dawood, and the whole team. So everyone is loving the session, and it was a really great session. Like, everyone enjoyed it. Amazing, amazing. I'm, I'm truly grateful that it gets to create an impact. I mean, I was in the shoes of many people. I'm sorry for going from scratch, but I was in the shoes of many people, and I always take um, precautions about that making sure that the single person um, in the chat, everyone else, you know, understands something from from what we just did. So I'm really grateful that you left your comments in there. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. So so uh, tomorrow we'll have a session with Gomal Gomalemo Gomalemo Muhati, who is a gold MSP and he's from South Africa. So he'll be talking about exploring new possibilities with .NET and Blazor. So make sure you guys join tomorrow as well. Uh, it will be same as today, 6 p.m. IST. And please join 15 minutes prior to the session. Um, yeah, we've got a question, actually. Well, um, I, I mean, it's a request. Tanvi would like to know about frameworks and wireframe. Do you have anything you can say on that, David? Frameworks? Yeah, frameworks and wireframe. Okay. So um, I think we, we don't... Um, I, I will share a link. I just gave a talk last two days ago, right, in Juneteenth Golf, and I was sharing the link to that with you, or um, 
if you check it up, I spoke more about, you know, uh, frameworks and, and all that you need to know whilst building a web application like Laravel, like Node.js and all those stuff. I'm sure those are the things that you are asking about and also um, drawing up your web application layout with maybe a pen and paper and after that documenting it very well so that you can, you know, um, you can understand the layout or your outcome, the outcome of your your web application. I'm sure those are the stuff that you're asking about. So make sure you follow the links that I'll, I'll, I'll share with you. Please, on Twitter, just tag me, share your, your, your feedback. If it is bad, just let me know. And I would make sure to tweet on the presentation link, uh, presentation slide link, so that you visit all of them, okay? Yeah, if it's bad, um, you, mm -hmm. you can tell me it's not bad, trust <laughs> me. Um, like, don't, don't need to give David any hate. He doesn't. This is awesome. I don't know why he thinks it's bad. This is amazing. But I think what he wants <laughs> is constructive feedback because that's the amazing person. Dauda, that was a really great session. Like, we all enjoyed it. To, you know, get better as amazing. a person. So, yeah, uh, that's David, an amazing person. He always wants to improve. So, yeah, thank you so, so much. much. <laughs> yeah, awesome. thank you so much thank for you having much, me. everyone for joining. We'll have you over tomorrow as well. So, uh, we'll ha we have sessions till 26. So uh, make sure awesome. you join each and every day. All of yeah. all of the sessions are delivered by Gold MSPs only. So it uh, they are very uh, much into technology and they, they like to also educate you with all the all those new yeah. technologies. So make sure to join every day till twenty sixth. Yeah, I, I think some uh, some of them yeah. are asking how to become a Microsoft yeah. Student Partner. Please, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. this YouTube channel that you are just check in there all the resources that you need. This YouTube channel has it, so make sure you check up for, um, check in some of the video, you will get all answers to what you need. Cool, thank you everyone. I hope you all found that fine. There's a link also in the chat if you want to learn how to be one. Um, so yeah, go ahead, sign up. Also do check out, do sign up for upcoming Microsoft University you know, event that we're doing. I'm going to drop the link in that chat as well. So MSFT recruit, I think that's the link for the form. So you go ahead, sign up for that. There you go. Here's the link. Everyone sign up for this event where the Microsoft University recruitment team will be coming on board to do three sessions with us. And yeah, also do check out Cinder's Twitter, his YouTube channel. He's got some amazing stuff on, you know, the Power Platform Custom Vision and mixing that uh where was the, the, there was a new video today i can't remember the exact thing um on on, on bing maps yeah bing maps check out mine as well i'm doing internship advice if you want to get an internship at microsoft or any other big company check out my channel as well um all these links are in the description check out Dawood's stuff check out emerson's sphere that's the new rebranding that we're going with um yeah and yeah. Adin Adinkia and uh, um, Kar as well, their links, uh, their Twitter handle are in the chat. Uh, I think the description of the session. Yeah. So you can just click and follow them. Yeah, you can all connect with us on LinkedIn. We are happy to answer all your questions. Just hit, hit, hit us up on LinkedIn. So we all have our LinkedIn account. So all the, what you can say, all the links to our LinkedIn handles, all the social handles are given in the description. So please check it out. Cool. Thank you all so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy your day. Have a good night's rest and give yeah, Dawood night, some uh, love. <laughs> Dawood has afternoon there. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Omkar. Thank you, Jinka. Thank you, Sundar. Yeah, Thank Thanks for Thank joining. Thank you, everyone, for joining. I'll talk to you all in a minute. I'm just going to play the trailer and I will see you in a sec.